Today on All Girls Garage, Bogey and Faye are going to prove to the world that you can, in fact, tow with the Jeep Gladiator Diesel, but not just tow a regular bumper trailer. The girls are going to fabricate a gooseneck hitch to sit underneath the truck bed so they can tow in style. Hello, hello, everybody, and welcome to All Girls Garage. This week, we have a very fun project in the shop. This is a 2021 Jeep Gladiator, but not just any Gladiator. It's obviously been highly modified already, sitting on 37s, nice little lift kit, all sorts of fun stuff done to this. But it's also equipped with the V6 Eco Diesel, which was basically the engine kind of taken out of the Dodge Ram 1500. So you get about 260 horsepower, but you get a ton of torque, sitting at like 442, I think. So this makes for a great towing vehicle. And uh, we've yes. got some fun <laughs> stuff in mind for how to set this up for towing. <laughs> like, and tow he will. He's got yes. a little bit of a crazy Jeep guy. Not only does he have this Gladiator, but he also has a toy Jeep, you know, an <laughs> off-roading, like, fun sort of Jeep uh, that he wants to be able to tow places, like you already mentioned. But he doesn't just want to, like, you know, tow a normal trailer, like, put a hitch on the back and actually just, you know, normal trailer like a normal person would do. This guy wants to be able to put a gooseneck trailer on the back of this truck. Yes. But... He's very specific about what he wants. He doesn't want a typical mounting point for his gooseneck trailer where it kind of takes up a bulk of the bed and makes it pretty much unusable. Yeah. He wants the mount for the gooseneck to be underneath the bed, which makes things a little bit more complicated. Better, I think, in the long run, definitely raises the cool factor, mostly because we're pretty sure that this has never actually been done before. We can answer. So there's that. This is going to be a little bit of an adventure. We're going to be figuring it out as we go along and uh, doing uh, some other supporting mods. You know how Faye and I both love supporting mods. Absolutely. because So we see we get this thing on the lift, take the bed off, and... Um, Start cutting? Ah, uh, I know. <laughs> yeah, because cutting up brand new vehicles still under warranty is my absolute favorite thing to do. It's mine. No, it's not. I'm it's mine. This it's is totally great. mine. Gonna be <laughs> All right. Um, let's, uh, let's maneuver this onto the rack, shall we? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so hopefully seeing all of this will help make a little bit more sense of what we're trying to talk about here. This is the gooseneck trailer mount. And sometimes the mounts go above the bed. This is going underneath the bed and it becomes this kind of neat flush mount situation where that slots in there. When you're using, when you're it. using it. Or cover. <laughs> <laughs> so this whole thing is going to sit nice and neatly in there. It mounts kind of horizontally across the across the frame rails essentially we can fit it. Yeah. yeah and these obviously exist right this is a kit that exists this particular one is out of or it's meant for a Dodge Ram 2500 3500 that mm -hmm. kind of deal um, and then they make generic kits for it so obviously this is a thing that exists as far as we know it's never been done on the gladiator so that's right. where the challenge and there's comes no kit in. for it right so we just found one that we thought was going to be sort of close yeah. and we're going to modify it yeah, probably. So what normally happy. would happen is this is going to sit underneath, and then these side rails are going to bolt to it, and then these end plates are going to bolt to the frame rail, and it bolts to this, and everything is nice and secure and rigid. Should be nice and easy. Right. Problem is, it's not for the Gladiator, and the contour of the frame rails won't allow this to happen. So we may try to fabricate something, or we may wind up welding instead of bolting. We're not really sure. Right, because we don't want to take too much meat off of yeah. this then that will like harm the structural integrity and we don't want the trailer coming loose. That would make us look really bad. And that would bad be real bad. So. Yeah. <laughs> so we don't know how much modifying we're going to have to do. There's definitely going to be some modifying involved, but now hopefully this makes a little bit more sense. We're going to go ahead me. over underneath our Jeep and see uh, just how extensive this modification is going to be. All right. So <laughs> good. Tape measures. So yeah, just kind of seeing like the width here that we've got to work with. Watch out for flying bolts. Oh, oh God. That's heavy. <laughs> okay, so obviously we have the bed off now. <laughs> this is going to make this a whole lot easier. And all of the measurements that they did on 
underneath show us that we are pretty sure everything's gonna fit where it needs to, but this thing clearly has to get out of the way and we still don't know what it is. So, um, <laughs> Faye's getting the wiring out of the way, so I'm actually cut it and uh, I get to cut things. Yeah, she, she gets to. I get to avoid cutting things. <laughs> All right, this customer's car, I mean, let me actually stick this blanket over the fuel tank. That's because, probably not a bad uh, idea. Yeah, um, do you want to sort of tuck that around yes. the harness as well? Yes. With that smocked up, and so far, knock wood, this this may actually be easier than we feared. But um, we've got it all kind of set in place, and you can see why we can't use these the way they are. Basically, this whole thing needs to sit down about a half inch lower than it is currently. So we're going to have to do a little bit of modification of this to make it all work with these frame rails and that bed. <laughs> yeah, but overall, like, I'm stoked that it fits so nicely yeah. between these spring perches. Like that was a major, I, I don't know, I was a little bit surprised by that. <laughs> so this sort of like marking out here where we're gonna be cutting. Yeah. Um, I say we because Maybe I'll feel like a little bit comfortable you got with this, this girl. since it's you not got actually the vehicle. No, <laughs> just kidding. Well, we only have one of these. So, um, but also you can kind of see we've got everything set up. We've got it level. We've got it centered. Um, we've got this back plate as it should be positioned. Um, however, the front one we decided to flip because it's going to actually interfere with one of the supports in the bed. So looking like actually we might have to trim this part I think, I'm down as so well. Too. I think um, a little mark there. So far, maybe. I don't want to jinx us, but oh, we might get lucky on this. I like getting lucky. With the gooseneck hitch locked in place, the girls can start to modify the metal to fit. And Bogey starts to work on the rear airbag so the back of the truck can hold the extra weight. All right, so everyone knows I'm a total Toyota fangirl, and in my eyes, Toyota can do no wrong. Uh, however, one thing that I have noticed is that the factory oil car filter does not have an anti-drain back valve. So the oil drains back through the filter when the engine is turned off. This creates a dry star on the filter and most engine wear occurs at startup due to lack of oil pressure. To fix this problem, Baxter Performance has come up with the spin-on oil filter adapter. This allows more oil to remain in the engine rather than draining back into the pan, allowing for faster oil delivery at startup. This adapter is made of aircraft grade anodized aluminum and allows you to spin on any filter with a three-quarter threads. It's easy to install and has a spring-loaded docking collar to maintain a tight seal and keep pre-filtered oil and post-filtered oil separate. Baxter Performance has a full line of spin-on oil filter adapters for a ton of applications. Finishing up cutting of those brackets down, I figured I'd get a jump on installing our to supplement our springs. So these cars, trucks, whatever you want to call them, uh, they tend to kind of squat down in the back when they're heavily loaded. We're going to be towing with this thing, so obviously it's going to be very heavily loaded. So this is going to help prevent that squat, prevent sway. Kind of a cool deal. In order to get this done, the springs, of course, have to come out. So I'm going to get the back end jacked up and start removing those springs. And then hopefully Faye will be done with those brackets soon and she can help me out because there's a whole lot of stuff that goes into this kit. <laughs> are out and as you can tell our airlift support is quite a bit smaller Now, obviously this is going to compress quite a bit so it doesn't have to take up all of this space but this is actually a spring that is an inch and a quarter higher or longer than the OE one that came on this truck so instead of just being able to use the regular setup we had to come up with an additional inch and a quarter spacer so this was just some old space 
Your stock material that we had laying around was actually much bigger, grounded down to fit. So now that in combination with the spacer that comes with the kit, this should take up the extra slack. And when the spring is compressed, everything should fit in there nicely. I uh, ran just a kind of oversized piece of airline so that we make sure we have plenty. This whole thing is going to basically drop in there like that. <laughs> and then we will wrangle this back inside and uh, make sure that this all fits the way we are hoping it will. And you would think that we'd be done at that point, but no, we have all of the wiring and all of the electronics and all of the controls, but we're getting close. All right. Now. Oh, okay. There we go. Oh, there we go. There we go. Yeah. Oh, 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 it's coming out this way. Jump up and down now. There it goes. Yeah. Nice. Boom. All right, so that and that. That's See? the way those supposed to go. Where there's a will, there's a way. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, that cutting literally took me a million years. I guess that literally, but this metal is so thick. So finally we got everything back in place and now we can figure out exactly where we can run our airlines without running into anything. And let's see, I think all we have left to do at this point is really tack this into place and get the bed on and then we can see is it in the right spot and pretty much go from there. Yeah, definitely don't want to fully <laughs> until we know that we've got it exactly yeah. right. But before we put the bed on, we're going to go ahead and put this nifty little tool in place just in case we are exactly where we should so that you can do a little tap mark and know exactly where your center is so that you can then drill, use your hole drill to put the hole in the bed so that it all <laughs> works the way it's supposed to work together. <laughs> and actually, like, one thing, too, we were thinking is that we want to test fit. Obviously, we're going to test fit the bed, but we might not actually have to cut portion yet so before i spend even more time <laughs> cutting what i might not have what to cut. you weren't <laughs> loving that come on uh, no. <laughs> so okay so let's lift this up and we can do our grinding shall we okay sounds good do you want to move a, uh should we put it forward or back just like put it forward just a little bit forward. okay How it is heavy oh, yeah it is yep I know. <laughs> so as you can see, we have our bed up for what we're doing <laughs> as our final mock-up because we don't want to have to go bother the guys next door again. <laughs> I mean, it's clearly we just move this, you clearly know, Clearly just the two of us left in this. <laughs> uh, yeah. So now that we got the bed back on, we can do some of our, our, our finals. We can cut the yeah. hole for where that hitch is going to be. Yep. We can figure out where the heck we're going to mount our air compressor. Yep. And... We have to get it up in here to do the gearing on the back end as well. And of yep. course, we are going to still eventually have to take this bed off again to do sadly more welding. to do all the right. finished welding. But at least we don't have to cut off our spot welds because it is in a happy position right now. So, yeah. uh, shall we get it back on the lift in the air? Oh yeah, yep. we got a lot more right. to do. Let's do it. Welcome back, guys. We are continuing to work on our Jeep Gladiator project. And what we have here is something that's kind of cool. This is the front half shaft. Um, and it's kind of an interesting setup. So this is what's called a THAD. It is a front axle disconnect. And it's something that's newer for Jeeps. That's kind of for fuel efficiency and kind of when you're in two-wheel drive instead of in four-wheel drive, it disconnects the front axle so that you don't have all that drag from the right. wheels and whatnot. And you can kind of see, actually, I'm going to pull this back and Let's disconnect try to this. Keep mine. All right. Keep mine in so place, we've though. got two halves mm -hmm. and then we've got this FAD unit. And so when it is in one position, hold this. Yep. I can turn as it's turning from the differential. It's not going to turn the wheel, but then activate the fed. And now I am turning. Now it's locked <laughs> up in place. So yeah. not locked up, <laughs> engaged, <laughs> locked into one piece. So right. So when you are in four wheel drive mode, obviously all of the wheels are turning. Yes. Um, but when you're in two wheel drive mode, this automatically activates. Yeah. And like Bogie said, just make sure that everything in the front, aside from the wheels, of course, doesn't spin. So you don't have all that added drag, all that added wear. And um, maybe that, does that have to cut, does that cut down on the services you have to do too? I wonder That's if you a have, fantastic like, question. I assume it probably does on the two, the front axles, because you now have a two-part axle break. tube mm -hmm. that's held together by this cast piece where the fad unit is going to sit. And if you're doing like extreme off-roading stuff, it's kind of just a weak spot. So some people are switching them over to solid axles, but then, you know, you're trading fuel efficiency for strength. It all depends on what you're using the truck right. for. In this scenario, he's not going to be off-roading. He's going to be hauling, but not off-roading. So... We're leaving.
leaving this alone. We're gonna get the other half shaft out Please. and uh, go ahead and pull our gears. Heck yeah. Yeah, I'm just weak. <gasps> but I got it. <laughs> It's fine. There it goes. Ooh. There's the shim that I don't want to lose. All right. Nailed it. Yeah. All right, so I mentioned before that our next step was going to be re-gearing this thing. So as you can see, there is an obvious difference between um, old, which we just pulled out, see so still has a bearing on it, and the new. I was actually kind of shocked by like the massive difference here. I know. <laughs> Hugely visible. So our factory setup was a 373 gearing. So we're going with a lower gearing, bringing us to a 488, which changes things dramatically, right? Yeah. He Not just made, from a visual standpoint. Yeah, totally. <laughs> you can see it visually, but it's going to make a huge difference when he changed those wheels to such large wheels and tires, that changed a lot of stuff as far as wear right. and speedometer and right. all the rest of it. Well, and fuel economy. Yeah. And that's a huge reason why people choose these trucks to begin with. It doesn't get like 28, 28 miles a gallon, which is insane. I mean, yeah. It's better than all of my cars yeah. <laughs> in this truck. So hopefully this is going to help him get back to that good fuel economy space. Um, also is going to help for towing. Now, this isn't the most amazing option for towing possible if you actually look at the charts, but this is going to be a really happy medium given that drivability back. It's going to be a daily driver more than it's going to be a tow rig. All right, we've got a lot of stuff we to do. do. Let's, let's get to it. Yes. Right. So you can see that I have the differential back installed. I've got my cover on, and we've actually reassembled all of the suspension. <laughs> You're probably wondering, wait, wait, Faye, you still have to put in the gear oil, so why the heck did you that in the way. Uh, actually, check this out. I love this package. I mean, you've <laughs> I seen this me before. Um, it's just it's so easy to use. Um, so I can actually get this in perfectly right from the top here. Yeah. Heck yeah. Um, and, you know, have everything in place. So much better than having to deal with like a transfer pump and all that kind of stuff. I know, because it really allows you to like save on waste because this way I know exactly how much I'm putting in. Yep. I don't know that there's like this mystery amount in the transfer pump. Right. <laughs> I can be like, you know, a little bit more accurate with it and uh, spill up a yeah. lot less. So. so a little bit more important. <laughs> we went with the Amsoil Severe Gear 100% synthetic gear oil. And the reason why we did that is because, you know, anytime you have metal against metal, which we obviously do in, in a differential, you know, wear is going to happen, right? Even with such low mileage, oh, yeah. I found, we found the wear that was in there, right? That's going to happen. Yep, yep. All those metal magnetic shavings on our drain plug. Yep. It's pretty exactly. surprising. Exactly. And so, you know, when you have a vehicle that you're using for any extreme conditions, that's off-roading on extreme terrain, dealing with severe temperature, or towing like he's going to be doing. Mm -hmm. Having a really good oil with a strong additive pack is crucial. So the M's oil Severe Gear actually has an ad pack that kind of part of the additive package creates a iron sulfide coating on all of the metal components. And that's going to really help protect it for the long haul. And yep. you know how much Faye and I love preventative maintenance. It is Bumping. always going to cost you less <laughs> than repair in the long run. So yes. Are we full yet? You need more? I'm going to need a second one. Yep. All right. Can be supportive. All right. And there Look at that. Can go. Nice. So in addition to the differential service, we're also going to be doing an oil change. I mean, it's in the shop anyway, but it's also due for an oil change. So figured might as well. And for that, we actually chose this Amsoil 540. This is a European motor oil. I know what you're thinking. This is a Jeep. This is like, there's nothing more American than this. But actually, interesting, this engine designed in Italy. It actually is a European engine, um, but also like this has all the specifications needed for diesel engines, that extra additive package. A lot of people think that, you know, the most important thing to focus on is, is it synthetic and non-synthetic? And is it the proper weight? In this case, it's synthetic, it's the proper weight, but there's also like a different specification level for diesel oil. Um, and, uh, and this is it, so. <laughs> With all the fluids back in the gladiator, the girls can go to work on cutting the hole for the gooseneck hitch. And then it's time to load it down and watch how well the JT pulls this massive trailer. What? 
Come on. This is insane. <laughs> At first, he showed up at the shop, and I was just like, dude, can we just install a normal hitch? Like, come on. What is wrong with you? Um, no, there's nothing wrong with him. This is a this brilliant is idea. And yeah. imagine, too, how rad is this going to look? Once mm -hmm. he's got the other Jeep on it, and we got Jeep, well, this drives too. We got, we got our oh, airbags absolutely. installed. We had to mess around with it a little bit to figure out exactly like what pressure they should be at. We found a happy sure. medium for this current weight, and actually, like, it's not a harsh ride at all. Like, it feels really nice. It feels comfortable. With a and lift we're on, kit. With a lift kit. Kit. Yes, we're on 37. Yes, exactly. <laughs> the gearing, I think, was crucial. Yeah. But God, he's got the coolness factor. He's got the miles per gallon factor. He's got the towability factor. I mean, this is this has everything. Okay. This has everything. Can we just give us ourselves a little bit of problem? Oh, absolutely. You did a killer job welding in that piece. Why, thank it's you. It's super sturdy. We thank painted you. it. It looks great. It's not going to rust. Like, it's in there. Oh, yeah. Also, I love how you remove the gooseneck. That little cap goes in, and it looks super clean. It's like it's like nothing ever happened. It's, it looks like the factory bed, and you can still use it 100%. It's worth so, it. I mean, sometimes he's going to I concede. Like, oh, yeah. Okay, yeah, no. <laughs> I totally concede. <laughs> and we just want to know, like, is this the coolest, like, Jeep tow rig you've ever seen? Hopefully you think this was super rad. Enough that we will see you next time on our next amazing episode of Long Run Scratch. Bye, guys. Bye. <laughs>